What's going on guys? Welcome back to a long, long time no see, hide, or die video. Uh, you know, we get asked all the time, like, hey, what happened to hide or die? And uh, now I have an answer for you. Because they, this is one thing I can really shout out to Vec4 Digital, is the fact that no matter what happens, no matter the state of their game, they never give up. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I respect that. And, you know, last year's doing that kind of thing as well. It's like, no matter what happens, no matter what the people are saying, they keep pushing through. And, and Vec4 Digital moved forward with Hide or Die and it's completely changed everything. I mean, everything you could possibly imagine. And I was going to, we could just do a quick video, you know, and, and show you point by point. But that would, honest to God, the amount of work it would take just to show you that is insane. That's how big this update is. So instead, we're just going to sit here and we're going to talk about it. We're going to go kind of point by point here, some of the new things, and give you a brief breakdown and give our thoughts on it. And of course, starting out uh, first here, let's start with the character changes. Characters have pretty drastically changed in terms of how they look. Uh, not just like aesthetics alone and graphics alone, the game looks much better. Uh, you could just see like a side by side here. You the clothing you, you get aware, I mean, it looks much nicer. The hair looks better. The Like I said, it's just graphically, it already looks a lot better. Like even the stance of the of the characters. Yeah, it's more natural. And yeah, I, I think they have, a, they have a much better look going here. So uh, if, if, if you're one of those people out there that is bothered by graphics, uh, you should be much more satisfied here. Personally, me, don't really give a shit. Uh, I've never been one of those that bitches about graphics. Um, my big thing, as long as the frame rate's good, I'm satisfied with that. And Hide or Die never really had that issue in the first place, so I'm assuming she still right. runs pretty smooth here. But now you have straight up full customization of everything. I mean, of facial features, uh, there's do dozens of different bodies to work with. You get a fully reworked layered clothing system. Uh, you have new facial animations and new expressions and dozens of new shirts, pants, jackets, and skirts to customize your survivors. Uh, I mean, you just have a lot to go with and just make your character look as much like anybody you want to. That's nice. Right. And, you know, that's where the the more, more casual players are also going to appreciate uh, the more customization. But <laughs> let me stop you right here in the comments before you say, <laughs> oh, they... You can change your clothes. Uh, cool. <laughs> da, da, da. There's a whole shit ton more. Yeah, be, be patient. Uh, we got a lot update. more to go with. Yes, I mean starting out, uh, starting out with things that are important to some people. So there you go. Yeah, like I said, there, there's a ton to work with here. They, they also have clips uh, throughout here as well that will uh, I'll continue to show you. But as you see, just looking at this video here, just a ton of different customization options between hair, body, skin color, um, anything. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, so, like I said, if, you, if you're one of those people that love this kind of that kind of thing, you got a ton to work with. So, and now uh, let's talk about just unlocking them in general. Um, they're broken down into several subcategories for those. You have shirts, pants, shoes, hats, name tags, graffiti sprays, 3D project sprays, and hunter skins. Broke down in different categories, and you simply unlock them by playing. And you do not need to pay. A single cent, I think that's something we need to reiterate, you do not need to pay a single cent to unlock, be given, use, or receive items from those systems. Instead, these systems are intended to provide players with unique and exclusive unlocks just by playing the game. That's always nice. Nobody likes that yes. shit to, to pay to do every little thing in the game, you know? Uh, all right, so next on the list here, you have the, the county card. And this is similar to season passes in games, all right? But it's free, Okay. Reiterating that free point here. Uh, as you complete matches, you will make progress towards these county card tiers. Progress is determined both by playtime and how well you played. Each time you complete a tier, you get the item contained within that tier. It's a simple... It's exactly what it sounds like. It looks like a season pass progression system. I, I mean, it's something... It's stuff we've seen in many, many games before. So again, if you're into unlocking things like that, constantly grinding for something, at least you have that now. Yeah, no, uh, no negative. No negative. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing, I mean, it, we'll, we'll get to the parts that you probably care more about, but just saying, that's one of the things. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about cosmetic crates as well. Um, these items cannot be found in the county card and are only obtained by leveling up your characters. They're common, rare, and legendary crates. They have one, two, and three cosmetics in them, respectively. Crates... Exactly like uh, what you'd expect, what we've seen in many, many games before, uh, like that of, you know, Call of Duty. We see it in Predator right now. It's cosmetic crates, loot crates are just a big thing in all games. Um, but these ones you actually just unlock simply by playing, 
which is always nice. All right, now let's get the fuck out of cosmetics, all right? Just know that there's a ton of things to unlock, uh, really unique looking things. I'll show you guys the last little scroll here of interesting looking t-shirts and jackets. Uh, fucking pink pants, which I'm always down for. And of course, you know, your, your little spinny hat. I'm always, I'm always for all that, you know? I, look, I, at boots, look at those boots though. Yeah. <laughs> they look good, dude. <laughs> um, all right. And you know, also there's the spray painting objects. Um, uh, but again, all stuff that you kind of could do before let's get into things that actually matter here. The big one game mode change big this is huge okay you guys may remember it was like 16 players per game and it came it was like a last man standing type of gameplay originally when it came to hide or die not so much anymore the new base game mode and the new update for hide or die is a 3v1 extraction game mode which is extremely interesting which will kick off season one they're planning on doing multiple seasons a 3v1 game mode called Extraction, which pits three survivors against one hunter in a much more intense, fast-paced version of Hide or Die. The broad overview of the game mode is as follows, which we'll go into here in a second. Uh, you know, first of all, I like that loading screen. I like the match yeah. starting screen, just to uh, give my opinion on that. But that's how this thing works, all right? Uh, and it's going to sound a little familiar, though. We'll talk about that as we go on here. Uh, survivors start by exiting hatches into the world, and the hunter starts as a local darkness site, all right? Survivors need to extract a required number of darkness to power the tower. Once that is completed, escape hatches will become available to open. Survivors need to escape, and the hunter needs to prevent them from all of the above. And if survivors fail to power the tower and the hunter doesn't get to them first, the darkness will fill the world and kill them. Uh, so... First, I'm a, this is something I'm going to point out throughout this video. This sounds familiar, right? This sounds like Dead by Daylight. Uh, and I, I think that's... I don't blame them for going this direction. To I mean, look how successful Dead by Daylight is. A fast-paced gameplay. Um, and I, I like the choice that they're going this direction. What I'm worried about is if it's too much like Dead by Daylight, then you're just going to start looking in that rip-off category. But there's a lot more here. There's a lot more here that will show how it's a little bit different, but it sounds right. very similar. Right. And I mean, every asymmetrical horror game, you know, Dead by Daylight came out first, so everything's going to be compared to that. Right. But the idea has been around. I mean, last year was crowdfunding before Dead by Daylight came out. It yeah. just didn't come out until after Dead by Daylight came out. Same with Friday the 13th. No, I don't think Friday the 13th. I don't think that's the case with Friday the 13th. I think, I oh, think no, they were in close. development around it's it. It's close. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's asymmetrical horror. It's a genre. It's not everything is a rip off of one specific thing. It's a genre. Right. Uh, and th what, what's nice about hide or die as well. This is a starting game mode for hide or die. This is the yeah. first season game mode that we're seeing for it. Um, in season two, they're planning on bringing back the last man standing game mode that it started with. They're just making some tweaks with it and tweaks with the AI to make for it's a much good. more fun game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, like, I, my biggest, the reason we didn't stream it all that much is it was very, very slow pace. And, and trying to keep that up during a stream is tough because if, if you have somebody, especially if somebody doesn't know what they're doing, it gets boring fast. And that was a concern. That was my biggest issue with the game. So now that they're taking advantage of a, of a 3v1 instead and a much more fast-paced gameplay, I'm all in for that. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and the reason they decided to go this choice is, one, it's easier to balance. I mean, you're talking about a very only four players to work with here, rather than you know 16. The faster queue and matchmaking times. That's an obvious one. Less players get into a lobby, the faster you find games. Um, all players can pick their desired role. That's really nice too. You're no longer a scenario where you have to like race to the darkness and fill up your darkness meter. You simply just pick what role you want to play, and then you go in. So just like Dead by Daylight as well with that. Um, you. Do you want to play killer? You play killer. You want to be a survivor? You play survivor. You get it done. And again, an overall more intense and enjoyable experience. All about that. Let's talk about maps. Let's talk about maps. We'll keep going into game mode here uh, later. We'll have a lot more to talk about with it. Like I said, big fucking update here. Uh, new maps coming in the game to fit with that extraction gameplay, that 3v1 scenario. You have Carnival, Overpass, and Slaughterhouse. Uh, let's start with Overpass. This thing, I think all these maps are fantastic. But this is overpass here. A very, I, all that they're just so beautiful, man. And I, I, yeah, I think they they have something really special going on here. Um, I, I really fucking dig the carnival. 
that carnival. I like how foggy it is and the creepy ass clown. I like the fun house you got there. That's sick. Oh yeah. That's sick stuff, dude. And being like, like even just looking at the the turn back area, the little maze area inside of the fun house. I'm assuming that's where that is. I mean, imagine being in that tight environment with a killer on your ass. Um, it's oh, gonna yeah. it's gonna be some pretty pretty exciting <laughs> gameplay. I'm also all in with the fucking bumper carts. Um, then you have the slaughterhouse. Uh, getting some text names from Asker vibes here, which is sick. Uh, this is again a really creepy environment. I think the maps. If there's one thing that they're absolutely nailing. It's the maps. They look gorgeous. I dig it. Um, so no no complaints there whatsoever. Now let's yeah, talk about uh, let's talk about something the game how you play as a survivor and things that have changed. Uh, one, you can slide now, and sliding is like extremely key for escaping. And we'll talk about how um, you can use um, uh, scaffolds to with your slide to escape situations but uh the slide animation itself is pretty clean uh i mean you have full-blown sprint you're able to go with it and just slide and get around corners really quickly and you can lean which i always thought was really sick with the game yeah. uh, so other stuff you could do with survivors now super sprint you got the scaffolds you're able to rescue people which we'll go into more detail here soon the health system is completely changed um and then of course the objectives themselves dude the fucking the the super sprint is pretty wild as well. Um, it's I mean it requires stamina to activate, so you have to be smart with it. Okay, stamina management. But it's I mean in a getaway scenario, you can get out really quickly, which I always like. Like that, I like being able to be strategic with it. And combining it with the slide, like there's a little clip down there of combining it with the slide. Who boy, you can you can get away pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and let's talk about scaffolds. I think this is a really interesting change. Uh, mm. Scaffolds are pretty much like your game changer. You need them to survive. And I, they're basically, I mean, it's just like straight up looping a uh, a survivor is what it feels like. Let's uh, I'll actually show you a clip here real quick. I and mean, I mean, you, you run, you're able to sprint, you see a scaffold, he sees a killer, he slides under, killer can't go underneath, but the killer has the ability to stab that bitch. All right, and drop boards under it so no more survivors can go underneath it. Um, I do have a bit of concern with it. Uh, if you we go to the gameplay clips real fast. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at this clip. This is what I'm talking about in terms of, of loops and loops that are concerning to me. Got the killer on him. He starts taking off, and then we just go on a, a scaffold run here. One, he slides back. That makes sense to me. Now the killer can take it out, but then you got another one about 10 feet away. He slides under and goes. Oh, now he goes right around the corner. And there's another scaffold. Easy escape. Okay, now, oh, there's another one right around the corner. Easy escape. Oh, there's another one right at the top. I mean, he could just, you could run that all freaking day. And then one of the concerns that, like, on top of that, to me, is you can, you can jump in this game. You can jump on top of things. You can jump uh, onto, like, fountains and shit, uh, which is, I... Like Predator, for example, you want to compare it to that. I think that's an issue of Predator, the, being able to Halo jump all over the fucking place. Um, so you can you can combine that with having so many scaffolds on a map. I'm worried that looping may be a, a little over little overdone. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to. I made the video big now, full screen. I'm looking at the stamina management of this character, and it looks like yeah, you can get your stamina back decently quick to just keep sliding and then sprint and slide right. with those close loops. Hopefully this is just an anomaly and they were just, you know, showing that, Hey, this is what you can do, but not all maps or loops are like this. Right. Cause this, this is a, maybe a little concerning. Hopefully it was just for testing purposes and the, it, the whole, all the maps don't have these scenarios all over. Cause that, that could be a problem, but, yeah. but we haven't played yet. So, I mean, obviously, we can't know for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I just, it was something I wanted to point out. One of my, I was, I go, I mean, they're still working on the update, obviously. Um, yeah. But it's just one of the things I was like, ah, that's a whole lot of fucking scaffolds, man. Uh, I mean, also, once they're taken out, they're taken out. You know, the, the killer right. can drop the, he can hit them and drop the boards on them, and you, you don't, you can no longer slide underneath the scaffold. So, once he takes them out, you're good. And just be smart and, you know, take them out right away yeah maybe they have to tweak stamina a little bit when it comes to uh those scaffoldings or whatever but um but yeah as long as there's a way to combat it i think it's gonna be okay 
Right. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and, and talk about rescues. In, in this scenario, you are able to respawn. This is uh, one thing that's v- very much different. Obviously, you can't respawn in, in Dead by Daylight, right? Uh, in this scenario, you know you don't want to die right away, so they're giving you the ability to re- respawn. Once you die, you are put into a coffin, all right, somewhere on the map. And another player can go find you and get you out of that coffin. And when they do... They are invulnerable and cloaked after that successful rescue, so you don't you can't just get killed right away, uh, right when you get saved, you know, which is interesting. Yeah, it's it's a little more last year than Dead by Daylight, obviously with the respawning. Right. When it's three v one, though, yeah, I think respawning uh, will work or, or is all right. Yeah, it's kind of like the the closet scenario on last year. You're right. Yeah. Um, but the health system that goes along with it is really interesting. It, I The first time I read it, I got kind of confused with it. But let me kind of explain here as we look at this picture. The first time you die, you, your whole life is based on these pips. Okay, and you start off with what appears to be uh, eight pips, right? And then if you die and get pulled back, you lose two of those. So these top ones that are grayed out, that's somebody that's already died once. All right? The ones that have red on them are the ones that are cur- you currently lost while still having that many bars. So you just no longer have that many bars when you come back. You lose two per life. So if this person at the top one, the Hydra Die 791650, if they were to die again and be pulled back, they lose two more that can never refill. And then the red ones, I believe, is how much damage you Yeah, yeah that's like damage you, you've taken, but that can be refilled all the way back up. Right, right. Um, so like I said, a little confusing when you when you first talk about it, but if we look at this picture here, the top person has already died twice, the, the second one has already only died once, and the, the bottom person here hasn't died at all, but he's taken three bars of damage. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, once you figure it out, it's really, it, it's not that hard, but it's kind of hard to explain the first time around. And I think that makes respawning, uh, will make respawning work. Because yeah, like, if, yeah, if you're dying and you come back, yeah, you have less health, so, you know, get good in a way, you know? Um, yeah, you need to survive to keep your full health availability. Yeah, right. I, th- I think this is one of the things that I bothers me about last year is the fact that you, the risk is so low, you know, because yeah. you can just be saved and brought back and have full health. With this, I think this is really smart and unique. It's like, hey, yeah, you can come back, so you could take a risk and try to go at a killer, right, or do something uh, a little risky, but... It, you're going to lose health. You're going to lose health that you can never get back. It so, changes the way that you play after each death. Yeah, ex- exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. So let's talk about that gameplay itself, that removing the darkness that you, you have to do. Um, you use extractors. And extractors, you got to locate them. you got to interact with them. And then you flip all the switches to green, which we saw in Hide or Die already. You had to flip all the switches yourself. And then once that extractor is on, you have to keep gas in it. So you have to find gas nearby and fill it up to keep pulling out that darkness. And if you stay within the zone, you extract more darkness. So you have a tight zone extractor there. And if you stay in it as a character, again, being a little risky that way, you can extract more darkness. You collect one darkness per second if you activate the extractor and one darkness per second if you are in the zone. Other survivors who enter the zone will begin collecting one darkness per second as well. All this contributes to the global darkness extracted objective as seen on the top of your UI. So a teamwork strategy, being smart, who goes in the zone, who doesn't, who has the most health. I mean, you got to be smart as a team and that kind of gameplay I dig. Yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely good like that. Yeah, so here's a, a, a short clip here, just going through it. You got to go in, you flip the switches, real real simple there, and now we are extracting darkness, grabbing gas cans, as you can see all the darkness going in the extractor, and you just chuck the fucking gas. I think that's actually unique. You could actually straight up toss the gas, so teamwork can come with that. Um, mm-hmm. So you could just throw the gas can to your teammate, keep filling that thing up, and then as you can see, the purple line here showing the, the zone in which you could be in. Uh, like I said, strategy. And I'm all for strategy. I don't like yes. games where you can just kind of go blindly and be successful. All right? You know, you got to work as a team. Uh, then you have, after that, after you get all that darkness out of there, um, two out of the three possible escape hatches will become available for them to open. These escape hatches take time to open. Not all that much time. They take time to open. Uh, so you have to be careful. 
of whether or not that hunter is near you, all right? And once open, all you need to do is just jump in and you're in safety. Equate that to the hatch, the hatch as we see in like Dead by Daylight. Get that thing open, jump in it, you're good. You did it. So, I'm all for it. Uh, I think that these are very smart gameplay changes. So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about the hunter. Again, you can spawn as any killer you want, or uh, as a hunter anytime you want. Whether you, if you want to play as survivor, you do that. You want to play as hunter, you do that. Um, scaffolds and doors, like I said, can be taken out. Okay, so this is uh, this is pretty key here. You can take out scaffolds as so here again i don't see so you have to you do percentage of damage so you have to hit it twice that takes a good amount of time so those scaffolds again a little concerned in terms of living but hey you also have dark sight um basically equate that to using sense in friday the 13th you go into a black and white mode here and you can see a uh, red bubble of where people are not bad yeah. well for that cool changes there. i also love that it goes into black and white it's sick Melee itself has been changed. Um, the animation has been adjusted a little bit. It's a, an animation that uh, I... It's a straightforward animation, as you can see here. So I know that's something that I struggle with pretty heavily in things like Dead by Daylight, so I'm worried about hitting uh, when it comes to like certain characters. But yeah. there's a clip in here later that we see of the scientist who doesn't, who doesn't swing quite like that, and it seems like the hitbox is fairly large. So again, not not all that big of a concern. I'll actually show you that that clip right now of uh, the scientist doing a little bit of damage. Um, like he's to me, see, it looks like he misses, right? But the animation itself, that big, that's a big ass hitbox. It's uh, he gets the damage anyway, and you see like the stuns and things you can use. Like it, th there's a lot going on here in this higher tie update. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, also, check. This is a clip I thought was really fucking cool. Um, if you get annoyed to the point, you're. Uh, this is again, just gonna kind of get rid of looping when you have some ranged weapons like this. Oh, switch to that fucking bitch. Bing. Done. Got his ass. <laughs> That's clean. I like that. Um, strategy. Yeah. It, 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 I wonder. I do want to take a look at which they don't have. I want to take a look at what uh, what it looks like if you're a survivor watching the third person of a of the killer swing animation. I wonder how that looks because that can give us a more general idea of what to expect as a killer from your hitbox. Right, right. Um, the range. Let's talk about some other progression stuff, uh, not cosmetic wise, but other things like your perks and your augments and your items. Let's talk about perks. Perks on your characters. Upon this update at launch, there will be nine unique perks per character. That's really interesting. Um, and again, these, they're saying right here that's the biggest gameplay altering effects is those perks. They can change the way you function and your abilities, and they're unique to each character. So again, very similar to Dead by Daylight in that manner, but nine unique perks per character. That's a whole lot, bro. That's a lot, that's a lot more than three. Huh? That's actually triple... It's actually triple, huh? Look at that math. <laughs> um, augments are like mini perks with smaller tweaks to specific action, actions, play styles, or effects. Not as significant as perks, but just as important to help shape your gameplay style and how you play and, and make sure that you're the strongest character you can be. And then there are items that are consumable, consumable items that you can bring with you into the match, similar to offerings and add-ons like that at Dead by Daylight. Uh, most items are one use per life, but a few more powerful items you can use uh, like once per match. So that's like your first aid kits and things like that. Yeah. Um, these can also be found scarcely scattered throughout the level while you play. Again, chess, dead by daylight. Uh, but bring into the match with you ensures you'll have access to it when you need it. So this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's very, very similar to, to dead by daylight. I mean, that almost feels like a, like a direct pool from Dead by Daylight, uh, and that I could further reiterate with the next thing we're moving on to here, uh, the Dark Path, uh, which is where you unlock perks, augments, items, and level up your characters and hide or die. Uh, this is going to look extremely familiar here. Uh, dark Path is basically the blood web of Dead by Daylight. You, It's just like, just like Dead by Daylight. You unlock perks, you unlock augments and items uh, right here inside of the Dark Path. 
Um, right. Uh, I mean, the thing is, though, yeah, it's similar to Dead by um, but it works. And when last year did their whole revamp, they did a very, very similar thing. So, like, yeah, they're finding what works in the asymmetrical horror genre and tweaking it a little bit and making it their own. And, I mean, again, it's familiar. You're going to know what to do. You don't have to learn something new. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not even a bad thing. Like, cause I'm not. It's not. No. I'm not calling it a rip up by any means. Uh, people, no. are, people are gonna. People are gonna fucking claim that. Let's let's be honest. We're gonna hear a lot of complaints about that. Um, but the thing is, man, like, it, if it works, you don't need to to fix it, right? Like, take what it, works. I mean, dude, that's like saying like uh, in first person shooter games, any game that has custom loadouts is ripping off Call of Duty. You know, like it's not it, the case. I, it works. I mean. If anything, it's paying homage to what works in the genre. Right. So. And I say to all people ask all the time, like, what do you like Dead by Daylight at 13 more? And, I'm, and I always say, like, hey, they're very different games. They're hard to compare. But the one thing that Dead by Daylight absolutely whips ass in is their progression system and the ability to constantly be unlocking things. No matter how high of a level you are, you can still be grinding in for blood points inside of that blood web. And I think that system is so great, and I'm glad Higher Die is incorporating something similar to it. And and that's why last year the nightmare failed. Eddie, One of you, you gotta you gotta have a goal, man. You gotta have a goal. You gotta have something to push for. And I, that's why I always say, like, if you're trying to find a competitive edge and you want something to grind for, Dead by Daylight's your game. If you're looking at some casual, scary gameplay, F13 might be your game. It just depends on how you like playing, uh, which is why I say they're not very comparable. They're very, very different games. So Hired Eye definitely has the right idea here. I cannot blame them whatsoever for taking the steps like that and moving forward with a much stronger progression system. Things to constantly yep. grind for. Yes. Um, so we're also going to look at how your character loadout is and where you can uh, apply such perks and augments and items um which it actually is a, it's pretty clean i i like the the ui in hydra i liked it before but now i mean this is clean you can see how you personally out you can see what it uh, attributes to your character and it's just a it's a clean look it's clear. I, I, UI. I, that's what I don't know why, but something about good-looking UI makes me really I- exciting. So they're doing good here. Cause, yeah, because we've had our uh, share of bad UI games. So oh yeah. Stink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That w- that's one of those examples of a, of a rough situation here. So here we got a, a a quick video of just applying perks and adding augments and whatnot. Uh, like I said, it looks good. I like it. I like the UI a lot. And UI to me is extremely important to make sure things are confusing. Yeah, that triangle, you know, showing your awareness, your strength, and your mobility too, like that. Right. And it's it's like that scenario where you, you get two, but you can't have all three. You know, it's like which right. which ones do you want to push for? You know? Uh all right. So why are they moving forward with this update? We can talk about this as well. One, player population. Uh, a full release will bring in many new players, which is nice, and bring back existing players, boosting the size of the community. Obviously, that's necessary. Hydra Die is in like a, that dead spot right now. Uh, so a big relaunch like this, crucial. Uh, so that's kind of why they've been quiet so lately, because they had to, if they're going to do it, they had to go big. That's how you bring in a new audience. Um, and of course, the primary argument that they're saying here, the primary argument against this is that the game doesn't have everything we want to have in it. We would like to add in even more content like characters, maps, and game modes. What we saw is that most successful multiplayer games continue to update with content over time. And we're at a point where we have the solid foundation to do so. Early access games are buggy, not stable, and have poor performance. We've worked to ensure Hide or Die does not have these sorts of issues anymore. We are confident we can deliver a fully releasable, stable product now. So we are. Yeah, uh, Hide or Die was still an early access game. Like, it is an early access game right now. Right. So, they're fully launching version, like, 1.0 with a whole new game, really. Exactly. And if you're looking to play right now, uh, you can join their Discord. Make sure you do that, discord.gg forward slash hide or die. If you own the game, you can fill out the application here on the Google form, which will be in the description below. And if you fit the specifications that they're looking for, they'll add you to the testing group within their Discord. VEC4 digital developers will ping the group whenever a testing session is available and servers are deployed. If you if you like the game, if you dislike the game, but want it to succeed and, and you have a PC, 
join the testing group. Help make it the game you want it to be. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I think, dude, this is one thing that always kind of frustrates me sometimes within uh, this community of asymmetrical horror fans. Uh, you don't have to only like one. You know, I, I see a lot of people like, oh, Dead by Daylight sucks. Play F13. Oh, F13 sucks. Play Dead by Daylight. Or play fucking both of them. Play all of them. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. Play, yeah, play, play all of them, dude. Like, that's the thing, man. And, like, we as horror fans and asymmetrical horror fans, we should want more asymmetrical horror games to succeed because that puts pressure on games like Dead by Daylight to work harder and give us better things. So these games push up each other, are constantly growing. And if Hyder Die is successful, Dead by Daylight has to keep pushing to be more successful. Well, yeah, when Friday the 13th came out, Dead by Daylight, you know, did take a hit, did learn what they need to do a little better, and they did. And then obviously when, you know, Friday the 13th, end of content, lawsuit, everything, you know, they they were the only big dog in town. Right. And they knew it. Yeah. Um, so they really didn't have to work as hard. They still did push out very good uh, everything they did. Like the, the three-year anniversary stream was great. High production uh, value in that as well, but they didn't have to because there was no competition. Maybe this will push Dead by Daylight to just do a little bit uh, different things, take a little more risks, etc. Yeah, even like even right now, we still hear some balancing complaints and perk changes that a lot yeah. of players feel unnecessary as Dead by Daylight players. That you know they're and people. I this is something again. This is a whole we can talk about this in a fucking podcast sometime about certain balancing changes that are in favor of survivors perhaps to push cosmetics and sales that way and that shit doesn't happen if they have competition where they are worried about losing players right so this is why we also need to make sure predator is successful predator and Ilphonic needs to make sure they slap out a fucking good game here because predator needs to add pressure to other asymmetrical horror games too just keep that yes, in mind 100 <laughs> just, just... Uh, I'm, lo- I'm looking at the google form and it's very simple what's your discord username where are you in the world? And then what playtesting times would you be able to participate in? It looks like the first round of playtesting is going to be this Sunday. So there's a 7 a.m. Central and a 7 p.m. Central time uh, testing periods. In other words, get the fuck on it, man. Want to be a part of it? That sounds like a lot of fun. Testing is always a lot of fun. And you can just play with devs directly. You can probably even ask some questions, you know? Yeah. So... That's the best way to do it. Uh, I hope you're able to stick with us in this update. I didn't. I seriously, I didn't know any other way to do this except to sit down and just discuss it because there's so much here. It hurts my brain. You know, I, I love when in a good way. Yeah, I know. I say I love when games do these big relaunches like this, but it's also just so much to keep up with. I mean, we're looking at basically a different game. I mean, this is not the hide or die that that I know. One thing I want to know, cosmetic wise, which I think they mentioned here in the Kickstarter rewards. Um, how how are we looking over with the slash and cast hoodie, yeah? Every in game hey. every in game reward has been reworked and polished, including backer heads. We could have left the old and marked them as delivered, but as we upgraded the game, we thought it was the right thing to do to put in the effort to upgrade the back rewards as well. You'll be receiving redeemable codes when the game launches. Nice, fucking awesome. I, I believe I believe our hoodie is yep. available for all players at some point. It'll be in those uh, those uh, battle passes, those uh, crates. That's so fucking weird. God, yeah, did you crazy. ever think that you'd be able to have a, a slash and cast hoodie just unlockable in a game? It's like surreal. Wild. Wild. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we're trying to push with Charlie the Legend, by the way. I'm hoping we can scoop that reward and do that. Okay, I'm done talking about shit. Let's uh, move on. Please let it, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about this huge update? Are you going to check it out? Let me know if you're going to try getting involved in the playtesting world too because I know I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, fuck, I'm signing up. Huh? Yeah. I want to be involved. I'm going to sign up. Um, like I said, let us know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And, of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.